We have three different $10 fragrances. Are they any good? Let's smell. Welcome back to Stop and Smell. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting. I appreciate all your support. I went out searching for cheapies. Did I find any good ones? Well, let's see. I came across three. They're all $10. You can find these at your rack stores, such as TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Burlington, Ross, etc. You could also find these on fragrance discount websites. Sometimes you're in a situation where you're a few dollars short of getting free shipping, and one of these might put you over the threshold, get you that free shipping, explore with a cheapie. So is it worth your time? Well, let's find out. Father's Day is coming up. Not everyone is a fragrance collector. Not everyone likes niche fragrances. Sometimes it's good to find a good quality cheapie for those people who just want to smell good. Something inexpensive that's not going to break the bank with inflation the way it is. One of these cheapies might be a great gift for that uncle, your father, your nephew. If you find yourself at a rack store and you come across one of these cheap be fragrances but you're not sure whether it's worth investing your money in or not well that's what i'm here for the first fragrance is from the house of penthouse life on top the bottle looks pretty nice i mean it's heavy glass for a cheap fragrance it's a nice looking bottle it comes with a <laughs> with a charm looks like a key and the cap sort of reminds me of ysl's loam it's in that same shape looks a little bit similar to it 2.5 ounce bottle. Top notes, lavender, mandarin orange, apple, mid notes, juniper berries, cardamom, clary sage, geranium, base notes, oud, musk, vetiver, moss. Let's just spray this on skin. I have to admit in the opening, it feels very synthetic, very sharp. So I'm going to wait a few minutes for it to die down and settle down. In the opening, I do pick up a lot of lavender, a little bit of mandarin orange, and a touch of apple. It's a little citrusy. It's a little sweet. Into the mid, it feels more fresh. It's a very clean scent. It seems very light, very uplifting. It does seem a bit floral, a little herbal. This doesn't seem like a modern scent. It almost seems like a 90s, early 2000 type of scent. It also has almost like a barbershop fragrance feel. In the dry down, I don't pick up any of the oud, but I do get a slight vetiver musky sensation. The longevity is really poor. It projects maybe for the first 15 minutes. It turns into a skin scent about an hour into the life of the fragrance. Maximum, it lasted on my skin for about three hours total. The mid reminds me almost like when you smell fresh cut grass. It has that similar scent. If I had to compare this fragrance to something similar so you could understand what kind of vibe, maybe like a CK1 in the floral aspect and the Carolina Herrera 212 with that grassy feel. The more I smell it, it reminds me a little bit of YSL's Loam. I was just joking with the similar reference with the cap, but it smells like a very synthetic version, a sharper version of YSL's Loam. If you look at the bottle side by side, it's similar juice color, similar caps, like I said, although my YSL Loam cap is a uh, very uh, bad shape right now, but I can see what they were going for now. Overall, it just seems a bit sharp and uh, synthetic throughout the fragrance. I thought that synthetic sharpness was going to dissipate, but it seems to stay throughout the fragrance so this one i don't think uh, i recommend you buying it unless someone is really into penthouse or if they're a playboy uh, collector other than that i probably would not buy this one it is only ten dollars for a 2.5 ounce bottle but i think you can do better hopefully we can do better with the rest of our fragrances our next fragrance is a 2019 release david beckham's follow your instinct and it's in the one point six ounce bottle so it's a smaller bottle but it's again ten dollars top notes mandarin orange orange mid notes star anise allspice cardamom base patchouli white amber haitian vetiver okay and there's your bottle and uh, it does have a magnetic cap surprisingly but for the price uh, it looks pretty good let's smell it
On initial spray, I do get a slight alcohol blast, so wait a few seconds, let it settle down. The opening is a sweet, juicy citrus burst. There's orange on orange. Into the mid, it becomes warm, spicy, with a touch of sweetness. Into the dry down, it maintains that sweetness. There's some clean patchouli, and it's warm with the amber, but nothing too overwhelming. There is a slight herbal touch with that vetiver, but nothing too pronounced. It's very minimal. This is a very casual fragrance. It's all ages, most suited probably for the spring and summer months. It's a nice cheapie. I think it's a step up from penthouse life on top. I feel like this is a nice little cheapie. There are some good David Beckham fragrances. I like the classic blue. I haven't bought too many other David Beckham fragrances. In the comments, let me know what's the best David Beckham fragrance you've smelled. Longevity is low to moderate. It it lasted on skin about four hours. It projects very light, maybe in the first half hour. But overall, it's a very nice, pleasant scent. Nothing that's going to overwhelm you. It's office friendly. It's casual. I think it's a good little cheapie. For $10, you can do a lot worse. Our last fragrance is in a 3.4 ounce bottle. Tahari Black Musk. Recently, I did review Tahari Red Musk. So if you want to see that one, it's in my videos. I didn't see any information online about the notes, but luckily the notes are on the back of the box here. It says, Tahari for Men Black is a fusion of rum notes and cardamom that unravels into a spicy pepper and smoky leather, finishing with a sophisticated aroma of tobacco and vanilla. From the notes, I'm very intrigued. I do love rum, tobacco, vanilla, leather, so it sounds very promising. So just to break it down, top notes, rum, cardamom, mid, spicy pepper, smoky leather, base, tobacco, vanilla. And there's your bottle. Looks the same as the other uh, red musk that I reviewed, just uh, in the black bottle. Let's smell. This one, unlike the other two, does not feel like synthetic or sharp, and it doesn't have that alcohol blast, so that's a great sign. The opening is a little spicy and a little boozy. I wouldn't say it's a very strong rum. The rum is there, I feel it, I sense it, but I feel more of the spices. Into the mid, you get a blast of pepper. Deeper into the mid, it feels almost like a car's leather upholstery, maybe even like rubber tires. It feels like you're in a car. It does remind me of another fragrance that I reviewed, Alfa Romeo's Black. This one also had that leather upholstery, rubber type vibe. Into the dry down, it does warm up and get a little sweeter with some vanilla. And there's a slight hint of tobacco. Not that much, but if you really smell for it and dig in and really try to smell it, there is a touch of tobacco. It's more of a clean tobacco, like a tobacco leaf. But that leather is still present into the dry down. It does give you that car upholstery vibe throughout from mid to dry down. This is a very masculine fragrance, but it's yet smooth. It's not really overwhelming. It's not too strong. This would be a good fall winter fragrance. This one probably won't appeal to teens, but if you're 20s and above, I think you might enjoy this one. If you like those kind of leather upholstery type rubber tire fragrances. Longevity is moderate, about four hours on skin. It doesn't project a lot. It projects lightly within the first half hour. The more I smell it, the more it makes me think of this one. Dark Rebel. Of course, Dark Rebel is richer, darker, smells better, better quality, but they were going for something like this. It's somewhere a combination of Dark Rebel and Alfa Romeo Black. I can see where it has parts of each, but this one is a much better fragrance. I would recommend you buy this one instead, but if your budget is very low and you only have $10, then maybe you'll have to settle for Black Musk. But it's not too bad. I actually do enjoy it. I'm liking it so far. Again, the major factor with these fragrances will be longevity. It won't last as long, maybe somewhere three to five hours with these fragrances. 
and projection is very light, very minimal. So if you're looking for something cheap, something that's not going to last, something that's not going to project, then maybe this is for you or maybe for a gift. The worst of the bunch, I would say coming in at number three is Penthouse Life on Top. It's a very synthetic version of YSL's loan. So I don't think it's worth it. Very sharp, not a good choice. Number two and number one are sort of a toss up. I feel like these are both nice cheapies for the money you pay. This is in the 1.6 ounce and this is in the 3.4 ounce. So if we're going just by size, I guess this is a better bang for your buck if you could find each for $10. So number two, David Beckham's Follow Your Instinct and number one, Tahari's Black Musk. What is the best cheapie you've come across? Have you smelled any of these Tahari, David Beckham, or Penthouse fragrances? What are your thoughts? Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, enjoy your fragrances.